All right, guys, welcome to what I think is like part two of my build blog. This is the continuation of Squirtle. We've ditched the 800D disgusting mess that I had before, and now we've moved to this partially built test bench. Huge improvement. Um, what this video is really about is asking questions about what I can do with this test bench. So I'm trying to figure out things about it, as there's not a ton of information out there, as I went with something fairly obscure just because I thought it looked pretty cool. Yes, it's 80-20 extrusion, so I could have just built this on my own, but I didn't want to rip the guy's design off that's not really fair what I am going to end up doing though is butchering this thing like crazy and changing it a lot to make it my own and in that we're gonna be trying to figure out how many rads I can fit to this thing because the most I've ever seen it with is one triple and I want to fit four radiators on it. I'm, I was kind of hoping two uh, 3x120s and two 2x120s. I don't think I'm going to get quite there, but I still want to get four radiators on it. I want to see where I can fit this fairly large reservoir, especially for this style of computer. And I want to see if I can do that in a pretty cool place, which you'll hopefully see later. And I want to see about how I can access things in the bottom of the computer. So we're going to try and answer all those questions in this video where I kind of mess around with this test bench. If you want to see all the rest of these build log videos as they come out, stay subscribed to Linus Tech Tips. Let's get a move on. Save on select Intel CPUs, NUX, and SSDs with special Black Friday rebates from select retailers. Click now to learn more. First things first, we gotta do a little bit of out with the old and with the new. So I'm gonna get rid of that pretty old power supply. I'm gonna get rid of that old, uh, not very usable at this point for what I wanna do, graphics card and that gigantic air cooler. I'm gonna leave the motherboard because while I won't necessarily be using this motherboard specifically, uh, it's the right size, so it's not really that big of a deal, and I do need it to be there so I can kind of see how stuff like cables are going to be routing and stuff like that, which I won't need the GPU for, and the GPU would be more annoying than anything. Later on, I'll have to have a placeholder GPU so that I can see how like the water cooling is going to come up and get to that, but for now, it should be fine. Now that all the old stuff has been removed, it's time to start strapping radiators to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab one of the spare alpha cool radiators that we had at work, a, the 3 by 120 and try to put it on alongside my other, in parallel at least, my other 3 by 120 millimeter radiator. My current one is really thick. This one is not quite as thick, but it's still pretty thick radiator. Uh, but we'll see how that works. Uh, I know this is going to fit. This isn't actually really a problem, but I do need to strap it to the bench just to make sure that other things will be able to fit alongside it. It itself fitting is not necessarily the most important thing. Everything else being able to fit inside the same ecosystem is also extremely important. Now that that's strapped to the bench, I need to go to the smaller end cap where I find out that, as I expected, the 2 by 120 millimeter radiator is too long. I do not want to have it on the outside. I do want it to be on the inside of the bench just so it won't get hit by anything or anything like that. So it's too long, it's not going to work. I was kind of hoping it would. And I could custom fit the bench to make it bigger to accommodate for it, but that would make the bench really big and get rid of the whole compact nature of it, which I do like. So, not going to go that route, moving onwards. The 140mm single radiator also didn't fit. This got me a little bit worried. I actually kind of thought that one would work, um, but no. It, the, the, the fitting, where the fittings should go on that radiator collided with another one of the radiators that I had inside, and I don't want to swap either of those out. I like the thick 3x120s, so... That one didn't work. Luckily, moving on to the single 120 millimeter radiator, that one fit pretty much perfectly, so we're pretty good for rads at this point. All right, so we're three for three for radiators so far, and we've covered the whole side of the bench in radiators that has the kind of like power supply on it, the bottom of the motherboard area. Something to take note of here is before I started strapping radiators to it, my plan was to have the reservoir come out of the cable management hole for the power supply, as I thought that would look really cool. And I space tested it before I put the radiators in. Just hold that in your memory for now, and we're gonna move on to fitting that last radiator. Now, problem with fitting the last radiator, I don't have another 120 millimeter radiator to test here, but I'm not worried about the spacing as the spacing is exactly the same as on the other side. So the idea of fitting a radiator here well, the idea of fitting the radiators all around the bottom is I thought it would look cool to have kind of like a radiator blackout on the bottom of this test bench. So that was a huge part of the inspiration of doing this. I wanted to make sure it fit. I'm happy it fit. 
I also kind of need to be able to access the bottom of the computer though. Of course, if I tilt the entire test bench up, I could reach up from the bottom and access it there, but that's really annoying. So, solution, put one of the 120 millimeter radiators on hinges. That's gonna be this side, where the top of the motherboard is facing the CPU end of the test bench. So I'm gonna put this radiator on hinges. I still have to go pick those up though, but it will fit. I'm not super worried about that. To be able to manage the tubing under there, I'm fully expecting to utilize a combination of putting key rings over the tubing and then hooking those key rings up to springs so that when I pull the uh, radiator out, the tube will pull along with it, but not kind of go everywhere. I want the springs to be able to manage it properly. It's gonna be an interesting project, but that's for a different video, not this video so far. All right, so that kind of concludes rads. We're essentially four for four at this point. The last one, while I don't have the hinges already on it, where that'll mess with the spacing a little bit, will fit. If it doesn't work with the hinges, it'll work with the flat plates, that's fine. I can just access it from the bottom, but I'm pretty sure it'll work with the hinges regardless, so we're fine for radiators at this point, not too worried about it. Need to move back to the reservoir, need to figure out how I'm gonna mount it, mount it from the bottom. Okay, well, this is where the figurative poop started hitting the fan. Things were not okay. The radiators were in the way. The seven inch power supply, which was actually longer, my, my power supply personally, was longer than the one that I used to have on the bench. Uh, things were not gonna work. I would have needed a reservoir that was less than half the diameter of this one to be able to make it actually work. Not good news at all. How am I gonna fix this? Well, there's a lot of fancy extrusion work that I could do by taking the motherboard support braces and chopping them off at the end of the motherboard so they don't go all the way down. Um, I could take the power supply support brace, which also supports the motherboards, and shift that up more towards the motherboard and then add a little bit onto the side to make sure that it could still support the power supply. I could do a whole bunch of this stuff with the extrusion to try and open up that space. Still didn't solve the problem though. The radiators aren't gonna move and I already don't have a thick uh, 3x120 alpha cool radiator like on the other side, on that side of the computer. So shrinking the rads isn't really gonna help a ton either. It might help a little bit, but not much. What really needs to happen is the power supply needs to be swapped out. Again, the power supply that I have personally was never actually tested on this bench, but it's just over seven inches and I tested one that was just over seven inches. That was not going to work. First solution that I came up with was a Silverstone short SFX 600 watt power supply, which you guys have probably seen in a video featured by Linus. It worked, it made sense, but it didn't look good. And it's only a 600 watt. There's not a ton of flexibility in terms of cabling and or power. So I wanted something a little bit more. I wanted an ATX size power supply because it looked kind of weird having an SFX on this bench. So I found Silverstone's other kind of short power supply, which is one of their 850 watts. More wattage, cool. More flexibility in terms of cabling, cool. And also an ATX format, so it fit. Cool, triple cool. It worked, and it worked by what I would say is less than millimeters. How the reservoir fits in there right now, it is touching on every single side. It is touching the motherboard. It is touching the radiator on its other side. It is touching the other radiator, and it is touching the power supply. There is literally no extra room at all. I can't believe I got this to work. Um, there's a couple options that I can do for fitting the cables around it, but it's gonna work. You can ask Brandon. I was pretty freaked out at this point in the build. I was like, wow, my entire plan is not gonna work. I'm gonna have to change how I'm mounting a whole bunch of stuff. I might have to ditch some radiators, all just to be able to fit a reservoir in there. I might even have to ditch this reservoir altogether because it's too tall to realistically fit into the bottom of the case unless I can have it poking up the top. My whole plan from the beginning was to have this reservoir poking up through that hole and it might not have worked, so pretty stoked that it did. So with that all figured out, what are my actionable items? Well, I need to figure out exactly how I'm gonna mount this. To be able to do that, I need to finish that extrusion job. So I'm gonna have to go shopping at a metal shop, try to figure out the exact lengths of all the extrusion I need and do the tedious job of setting that all up. Then I need to figure out how to mount this, which will probably be an extrusion based box with a plate on top of it so it can sit there and I'd screw it into that. Hopefully that will work. We'll have to see, that'll probably be next video. I also need my motherboard RAM and CPU to kinda show up, so 
that'll happen at some point, but I'm not too worried about that. Then I need to figure out my like fittings setup. The bottom of the computer is already set up with how the radiators are orientated so that um, they kind of feed into each other in a big square, which is fine and logical. Because of how messy the area where the reservoir is going to be is, I'm going to have to have the water cooling for the graphics card come up just below the motherboard on this side, and then I'll have a right angle on the graphics card so it can grab it from there. Then I would just go straight up to the CPU and have it drop down just above the motherboard on this side. Obviously, I'm going to have to see, like, oh, should I have a right angle here? Should I not have a right angle here? All that kind of stuff. But it's fairly straightforward as of now. So I need to go shopping for fittings. I need to get some extrusion, and I need to have my components show up. Speaking of stylish design, 5-4 Club. 5-4 Club allows every member that they have to get $120 worth of clothes for just 60 bucks a month. But today they have a very special Cyber Monday deal going on, which is you can get 60 bucks a month worth of clothes, same price, but using their Cyber Monday offer code, which should be somewhere on the screen right about now, you get your second month for free. So that's essentially $60 for $240 worth of clothes. And best of all, you don't even have to leave your house. And if you do leave your house, you can spend more of your time at a computer store buying parts instead of clothes. Sign up is simple. You just head over to their site using the link in the video description down below and follow their sizing and style profile, which takes about one minute. Submit your payment and shipping details and boom, you have carefully selected and stylish clothes headed your way very, very quickly. So check out that link in the description and go over to their website using their Cyber Monday offer code to save money and avoid the overcrowded mall shopping experience today and just get your clothes online. All right, guys, thank you for continuing this adventure with me. Hopefully I can keep doing Squirtle updates. Um, there's definitely a lot more work to do, so I'm sure I will. If you liked the video, like it. If you disliked it because you hate Squirtle, dislike the video. Uh, subscribe as usual so you can see all the rest of our stuff. Comment in the video down below or on the forum. If you're on the forum and you don't like the ads, become a contributor. Be sure to check out newoffice.linustechtips.com to see our campaign if you liked that video with people throwing stuff at me. Hopefully this one was easier to understand. I know there's a few complaints. People couldn't understand what I was saying. Sorry about that. We just thought it would be kind of a cool video. I don't know. Oh well. Sorry. Uh, if you guys want to see the one with Linus painted up, you'll definitely be able to understand him properly in that video and that should be coming up fairly soon. Stay subscribed. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.